if you remember this last week, we talked about young, young living essential oils. And I keep saying young essential living oils, yeah. but it's not quite right. But. <laughs> Uh, and wh- where did we end off with? We talked about their their book that they like to use, which is considered the Bible of the of the healing of essential oils. But right, yeah, they they essentially they essentially wrote their own. They yep. they wrote their own their own <laughs> their own book. So uh, back to the back to the Wikipedia right. when it's talking about the business model for Young Living. So let, let's just dive right Ooh. back into this. Young Living employs a multi level marketing model. Recruiting thousands of independent distributors who can sell directly to customers and earn commissions on sales to distributors recruited in a hierarchical network called downlines. Right. It is a pyramid shaped money making endeavor. There you go. Yes. (laughs) It is not the other thing. (laughs) Although distributors can potentially make profit from direct sales, more money is made by commissions through sales made by people who the distributors recruit. So the more downline you have, the more money you make as a person higher up the line. Right. And unless you're one of the first 100 or so, (laughs) unless you're, unless you're at the top of the ramp. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, if you're at the on ramp, you're losing. It's a (laughs) two-sided ramp, uh, uh, design, uh, structure. So distributors are categorized based on their sales. The lowest rank with the least sales are refer- referred to simply as distributors while at the top are called royal crown diamonds they uh, they always g- they, they love to give they love to give their their, their super tiers, exclusive names and their terms tiers, and- like like really shitty names so this this article that i have here uh is from the fashionlaw.com and it's a, the the title of this one says young living the 1.5 billion dollar essential oil company is a cult-like pyramid scheme. Their words, not mine. Yeah. Per new lawsuit from the fashion law. According to a proposed class action lawsuit filed a while back from a Texas federal court by Young Living member Julie O'Shaughnessy, the company, which brings in more than $1 billion in revenue each year, purports to sell essential oils via complicated multi-level marketing operation, a model that is overwhelmingly dependent on the recruitment of new people into the Young Living sales force. Mm-hmm. And so I've I brought I took pictures of the lawsuit. There's a class action complaint against this whole thing. Um, there's a different person that had a a uh, another class action lawsuit on mm-hmm. this one, which is uh, Lindsay Penhall was another one that had this against Young Living. Mm-hmm. While Young Living holds itself out as a company that creates abundance, i.e., financial <laughs> rewards for its nearly three million members, Jesus in reality, Christ. Mrs. O'Shaughnessy's complaints asserts that. Young Living is nothing more than a cult-like organization falsely peddling the ever-elusive promise of financial success. Kind of like Amway, Mm -hmm. Lululemon, It Works, all of these other products, you know, Mm -hmm. which becoming a distributor for a lot of these companies means you get a discount if you're going to purchase the stuff yourself. I'm kind of fine with that one. You know, if it's something you like and you use, by all means, keep using it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Don't just don't peddle it to other people as false fucking <laughs> stuff that's going to cure your cancer because you put some peppermint oil behind your ears, yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and not all, not all of these things are, are equ- equivalent. No, absolutely you know? not. Like the, the, it works thing that I keep referencing is, yeah. is a wrap that you would put around your midsection mm-hmm. to help you lose weight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I watched the movie, the full Monty. That doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't really, <laughs> Yeah, uh, you can't go to the shed in your garden with your with cling wrap around you and eat a couple of candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, what they're saying here, by way of a structure that ensures that every new member will almost certainly lose large sums of money trying to recruit additional new members from an ever shrinking pool of available candidates because the people get burnt on this. Oh, yeah. They and do. they tell their friends that they got burnt on it. And it's yeah. harder to sell the people that have been burnt already. So. Mm-hmm. So the Young Living System works like this. One, a member joins by purchasing the required starter kit from an existing member, which ranges from $100 for a basic kit or up to $260 for a premium kit. Young Living pays that person a cash bonus of $25 for each new member that they recruit. So you get $25, you get a quarter of whatever the basic kit sells for. Right. Because the company does not pay a commission to new members for the sales they make, recruiting is prior- prioritized over the sale of the product. Mm-hmm. So you're not selling the product, 
yeah, you're selling the company. <laughs> yeah, they don't give a shit. They don't give a shit how much product you sell. It's it's just how many people you can sign up. Because you're not going to make any money off of selling those things. You right. Know? Well, because it's overpriced essential oils, which are and no matter really cheaply cheap and widely available. No matter how much you sell as a new person mm -hmm. of that product, you're not going to see a commission from it. Right. Unless you sign other people up. Yeah. So, in which, fact, which is which is where the whole scheme, scheme comes. thing yeah. comes into mm -hmm. it. Yeah. In fact, a new member's only opportunity to earn uh, enough income to cover the cost of a membership is by recruiting new members and encouraging those members to also recruit aggressively. Right. By emphasizing recruitment over product sales, Young Living crosses the threshold from a legitimate multi-level marketing entity into an illegal pyramid scheme, says the plaintiff in this case. Should members want to uh, be eligible to achieve commissions based on products they sell, they must enroll in the Essential Wards program and maintain their active enrollment by monthly purchases of an ever-growing inventory of unused products, they say. <laughs> A direct violation of the Federal Trade Commission's 70-30 rule, which requires that multi-level marketing schemes sellers must sell more than 70% of their individual monthly inventory before being required to purchase additional products in order to be eligible to earn commissions. Because this has happened in the past with oh, yeah. multiple other organizations. <laughs> yeah. Amway being the big one that's rolling off my tongue right now. So, yeah. The complex and intentionally hard to understand multi layer compensation slash participation structure of Young Living is a hallmark of illegal multi level marketing pyramid schemes, said O'Shaughnessy. And this one is not a particularly lucrative one for its members. The suit declares that based on Young Living's own disclosures, 94% of total members of the total members of this of this company that sell this stuff at all earn an average of one dollars per month in sales commissions and more than half of those who joined in 2016 alone made no commission at all because there's just a lot of people that aren't in it to sell it i mean like i said yeah. there's personal use people you know we're still she says these same members were nevertheless required to spend hundreds of dollars on products to remain active members. As such, the average loss per member in 2016 was approximately $1,175. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of lavender. Yeah. All the while, as Bloomberg reported earlier, the Young Living Company itself exceeded $1.5 in annual revenue, which was derived, according to the suit, from its own representatives paying to be part of the sales force. God damn. If this was a legitimate business you would be able to buy the products wholesale mm -hmm. and turn profit from the moment that you're selling them yes that's how a jobber works you know <laughs> <laughs> that's how is that is how it should work even yes. my even my failed businesses of selling like car tuning equipments and stuff mm -hmm. like that like honda civic shit you bought it at a certain price depending on how much you were selling you know mm -hmm. if you were buying a thousand dollars worth of product you get a 10 percent cut on the price of, of whatever that was for wholesale you know you bought twice that much you get 20 percent up and up into like a certain level where they essentially give it to you because you're selling so much of it that you're going to be making enough money for them to be pay feeding their kids you know yeah. that's how wholesaling works guys mm -hmm. <laughs> jesus anyway it's ridiculous with the foregoing on in mind, O'Shaughnessy set forth claims of violations of the Racketeer-Influenced Corrupt Organizations Act, which we all know as the RICO Act, RICO. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the connection with defendants' patterns of racketeering activity, wire and mail fraud, and conspiracy, she said. Uh, she asked the court to approve her class action lawsuit, thereby enabling others similarly situated individuals to join in on her suit and share the unspecific monetary damages being sought. A representative for TF Young Living told TFL, we rigorously deny, vigorously deny the allegations and will defend our company against this erroneous claim. Young <laughs> Living is committed to maintaining the highest level of integrity and business ethics. So any allegations right. of this nature are very concerning to us. <laughs> right. Not a single word mm -hmm. about, you know, we, we don't give commissions out to people that don't sell enough. We don't... Uh -huh. Nothing about the 70-30 rule, none of that stuff. So our business model supports the entrepreneurial efforts of those who choose to go beyond product utilization by building a business. The most common method for <laughs> customers to purchase Young Living products is through a membership rather than as a retail customer, since members can purchase products at a wholesale product pricing. Uh, 
if they're not able to turn a commission on that sale, they're not getting it at wholesale. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's not just calling it wholesale pricing <laughs> doesn't work. That that's that doesn't because by by the definition of them not being able to make a commission, they're selling it for whatever that price is. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> they'd be turning a profit. It's not hard. It's really not hard. The capitalism 101 bullshit right here. You mm -hmm. buy something from cheap, you sell it high. You know? <sighs> what else do they say here? Mm -hmm. uh, the rep further stated, many, if not most, of Young Living's members only buy product from Young Living and do not sell them or enroll others in Young Living. As such, they do not receive commissions from Young Living. Oh, but because we're, you know, they're, not, they're only buying it for themselves, then that makes it okay. They still have to buy a starter kit, so we can still count them as downlines and people mm -hmm. make profits off of that, but no, that's fine. And I'd give you the case number, but it's O'Shaughnessy et al. v. Young Living Essential Oils et al. You know, and there's a whole thing for Texas on this one. But anyway... In a 2017 New Yorker uh, article reported that distributors are required by Young Living to make hundreds of dollars of purchases per month to qualify for a commission. According to a public income statement, we already read that part, for less than a dollar they made, uh, while one-tenth of one percent, less than one-tenth of one percent, about 1,000 Royal Crown diamond distributors made over one million dollars. One-tenth of one percent of this company cranks out a million dollars. <clears throat> Massive downstream <laughs> is what it has to be. Yeah. According to analysis of the company's 2018 income disclosure statement by Business Insider, 89%, 89%, guys, keeping that in mind, of all members attempting their own business were on the bottom tier, earning an average of $4 annually. While on those first three tiers comprising 98.7% of active members averaged between $4 and $1,551 annually, not counting required monthly costs to remain active within that company. They it, are stealing they money. Are, they're, they're, <laughs> st they're stealing money with the promise of if you just keep working if at you it, just keep working at keep it, grinding eventually, at it. you know, you too. You too will become a millionaire. That is. It worked for this one tenth of one percent here. <laughs> we were once distributors like you. And but we got in on the ground floor. <laughs> you should get down on the ground floor too. You know, but, I had someone try to start me up with new skin oh, a while back, a long while back when oh, I was still in high school, and I was like, "That sounds great, man. I'd love to make that much money." <laughs> I'm not. Oh yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. The pitch is the pitch is awesome. Yeah, so does Scientology. Scientology sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Superpowers, fucking sign me up. Fuck yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get to their products, shall we? We already oh, know this. Please, yeah. <laughs> Young Living sells essential oils and other related products. It claims to sell completely pure, naturally derived oils. Sure. <laughs> naturally. Mm -hmm. Its products are sold online and through distributors. A report by Business Insider in 2020 documented at least 11 complaints made to the FDA mm -hmm. between 2013 and 14 of Young Living customers claiming serious adverse event reactions to the products. The FDA concluded that the cause of one case to be a possible product failure, while the others determined to be the result of an incorrect, incorrect usage or allergic reaction. So, let's get to some of these things that uh, actually happened here. Mm -hmm. This is also from Business Insider. We are saddened that past events and actions by the company founder who is now deceased are being dredged up and mischaracterized. <laughs> we see many of the points in this article as irrelevant and outdated and not reflective of Young Living as it, as it stands today. Right. We are grateful that our members and customers appreciate Young Living and its products and practices. Young Living is focused on sharing the highest quality, purest essential oils with the world and giving back to the communities in which we operate. God, this guy sounds like Smithers um, <laughs> in whatever ways we can. The company has in, in instituted robust compliance practices and complies with applicable laws. As it is today, Young Living is a health and wellness company that strives to make the world a better place. Nothing like <laughs> hard. <laughs> That that is just, like that it, is the paragraph of a person that only gets semis. You know that's it is yeah yeah it's it's mealy mouth bullshit. I yeah. got chubs for you. 
<laughs> yeah, nothing. Right. No blue steel from that article. So uh, Young's products are part of the flourishing dietary supplements community. Not just oils, but vitamins, capsules, powders, and the like. Lining right. the shelves of your local health store. All right, and, it's all bullshit. All bullshit. Yep, and I saw, I saw them. Okay, f- fun little aside here. Uh, I've been on the hunt for distilled water. <laughs> oh, yeah, good luck finding that. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard to find. So I ended up going to a, a kitchen store like in Ogden. Yeah. Called, uh, for, what is it? Uh, kitchen, kitchen Needs? Yeah, Kitchen Needs. So what mm-hmm. is, like with a K. Right cool store has a lot of good baking stuff in there has all the equipment you need but it also has prepper shit in there mm-hmm. <laughs> and it also had a uh, um a whole shelf of essential oils <laughs> and i was just like and that's the one thing that they had the cameras on because people were more likely to steal all that stuff so anyway that was that was interesting going there and i did find my distilled water oh that's good yeah but anyway <laughs> side story there it's just funny how this stuff is just so ubiquitous in utah yeah it, it yeah it absolutely is but you know hey uh essential oils can be i mean they can be fantastic especially food grade essential oils uh because you know it's food <laughs> yeah good luck trying to make peppermint bark without actual peppermint oil <laughs> yeah exactly that's <laughs> Anyway, vast majority, a lot of them, you know, yeah, food grade oils are excellent. So in in 2019, that industry was estimated at one hundred and twenty three billion dollars in the United States. That's all of the dietary supplement stuff. So uh, let's see. And as as forecast to increase significantly throughout the 2020s, this was before the pandemic hit. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) I can only guarantee you. That they've grown leaps and bounds with people self-treating themselves instead uh, of actually people, getting real medicine. Yeah, people self-treating and uh, people losing jobs, looking for... And mistrust ooh, of doctors. Right. And, yeah. uh, this is a great thing. I can... I can I work can, from home. I can work from home. And, and, and it's, it's, it's a healthy thing. And I can become very successful. Yeah? Yeah. So Fucking vampires, hope vampires here. That's that's what they are. So supplement manufacturers are not obligated to undergo strict, undergo stringent testing to verify the safety of what they sell. Unlike pharmaceutical companies, mm-hmm. drug makers go through the FDA's drug drug development process, which also is very fucking problematic because the companies pay for these drugs to be approved instead of it just being a taxpayer funded thing. So. The FDA's income is based upon the company still putting it. It's a whole thing. It's a whole goddamn thing, which. Oh, I'm, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> <laughs> An extensive undertaking involving rounds of rigorous testing. And also the testing is problematic, too, because they are able to cherry pick data. I'm just saying that the FDA is not the fucking white knight a lot of the times in these stories. You know? <laughs> it, it's 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 not not quite that bad. I'm trying to think what was the. Uh, what was the anti-pain medication they came out with that ended up killing like 20,000 Americans ultimately? Oh. I'm trying to remember what it was. It's, it, it doesn't really matter. I, but it's almost like also that sleep aid that they, that they didn't want to use in the United States because they had studies that showed that it was dangerous, but it caused flipper babies in Europe mm-hmm. and stuff, you know? <laughs> what? Thalidomide? Thalidomide! There you go. There's one of them. But I'm yep. trying to remember the one that killed people in America, though. It was I can't remember the name of it. It was a, it was a painkiller that they, they took away. It was a non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory, mm. but no, it wasn't ephedra, Mikey. I love ephedra. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. By contrast, supplement makers are controlled by the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 94. Man, we've grown a lot since 94. <laughs> <laughs> supplement manufacturers are free to bring products directly to the market without ever having to substantiate the quality to the FDA. As long as they don't make claims that their products are intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. I can sell you a turd in a box and tell you it's all natural, organic. It's not wrong. (laughs) All of these things, as long as I have on the box that says intended, not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure, prevent any disease. You know, Mm -hmm. it's snake oil salesmen. So they're in the clear. Instead, the burden is on the FDA to prove that the product is actually harming people. Mm hmm. And they don't have the budget to do that a lot of the time. So when Young received the FDA's letter, it came as a shock, according to former employees who were there at the time. 
Before the warning, he enjoyed fr largely free reign of how he talked about his oils. His staff would occasionally try to keep, we're talking about Gary Young here, mm -hmm. try to keep him from what they regarded as flagrantly breaking the FDA rules. But by and large, he was not challenged over his unsupported claims to potential customers about how oils combated illness. But Young was not an easy one to keep in line. <laughs> Clearly, as we discussed last week. So he fumed about the FDA's heavy hand, railing against the medical establishment's attempt to muzzle him and his company. Mm -hmm. And less than a year after the letter, at a retreat for gold level, gold level members of the company's farm in St. Marines, Idaho, in 2015, he vented his frustration. It's all about conditioning you to be a yes person, Young told <laughs> the members. It's all about telling you that you're too stupid to make your own decisions. So you don't have the right or the intelligence to say if you want to take frankincense oil and rub it on your spine or put in put it in your water or whatever you want to do with it. You don't have enough intelligence to make that decision. Well, no, I mean, you're allowed to make that decision. Yeah. You're just not allowed to tell other people that it cures or solves a problem mm -hmm. that it's not backed up by science, man. <laughs> We have a right, and you have a right, and our children have a right, and it pains me to tell you that right now I can say things in France, in Croatia, in Russia, in Germany that I cannot legally say in the United States today. It, it's come on us very quick and very fast. I highly doubt <laughs> EU countries are more lax. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean... the. Uh some like Russia, I would believe. That, yeah, Russia. That they believe. like don't really. You just got to know how to line that, the fucking but... pocket of somebody. <laughs> right. In Germany, yeah, there's a lot of shit you can't say in Germany. Oh, a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, Young had a plan. We're gonna fool them big time. He told the members, "We're not gonna become conformists." Well, he had two plans really, and we talked about this one a little bit last week. One right. was straightforward. And the other one was in, ingenious and had been placed quietly in motion years before. And that's the book that that's he the book. that right. he set up a publishing company. But we're going to get into more details on that because apparently these rights were created by this, the guy and then sold off to another company and sold to another company. So therefore, his name doesn't appear when you look at who owns that thing. Mm -hmm. But he owns that thing. <laughs> it's how you can structure businesses in the United States to um, hide ownership. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. great. So. <laughs> Uh, the straightforward plan was to shift the discussion to avoid the, J the FDA's jurisdiction. Young advised the group to follow the letter of the law when it came to making medical claims. But when it came to spiritual claims, he said the FDA had no jurisdiction. Well, technically. <laughs> It'll cure the ghosts in your blood, you know. <laughs> technically. Cocaine will do that, though. Wrong, but... <laughs> Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Um, if you've got a lump in your arm and you've got a lump in your neck, and you got a lump in your head, there's absolutely nothing that you cannot say about the spiritual use of your oils. You got lumps because yeah, your spirit yeah. is not aligned right? You know? <laughs> they're, they're spirit lumps. Okay. Well, yeah, he, it, his, his defense for this is, of course, is saying that uh, in some cultures, uh, the, that's the white man go-to for like, uh, I'm going to do something bad here. Uh, <laughs> Disease is viewed as a manifestation of spiritual failure. <laughs> That's like my parents telling me those bumps that you get on your tongue that really fucking hurt. Like the, the whatever happens whenever one of your taste buds gets like engorged or whatever the fuck it is. They just mm -hmm. hurt that bump on your tongue. My parents used to tell me those were lie bumps. And I'm like, fuck what I lie about. <laughs> Which a lot. <laughs> you, you lied about touching your teeth with your tongue. <laughs> right. That's that's all it is. <laughs> Fucking bacterial transfer. <laughs> anyway, um, there's no such thing as disease. There's just spiritual imbalance. There are evil deities, okay? Spiritual imbalance, evil deities. And we're all, all we're going to do is we're going to boost people with spiritual food, his quote said there. Uh. But Young Living's compliance team knew that to the product, the company, it needed to keep members in check. Sources inside the company told Insider that meant scouring the internet, working with a third-party company to find inappropriate product claims, in addition to auditing members' social media histories, a former employee said. So now you're coming for their First Amendment rights. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I, I'm sorry, I thought this was America. <laughs> God damn it, man. Uh, if they did find a poster blog making inappropriate product claims, they'd contact the member to remove it. 
The former employee told Insider that they relied on three strikes in your out system. If the member was contacted a third time, they'd face repercussions such as not being able to place new orders or receive commissions. After about a year after that member's retreat, Young summoned his compliance team for a meeting and he went to discuss his other plan, the quiet one. So he spoke with the people and it's the book that we were talking about there. Um, so what is the book here? It's uh, since the inception of Young Living, the essential oils desk reference has served as a guide to essential oils and the various ailments that Young claims they treat. According to former employees, EODR is a commonly used abbreviation within the company. The book is geared specifically toward Young Living members, and two former employees said that the members viewed the book as if it was the Bible. Of course. Of course they do. It's huge. Right. It's like a textbook, but it's all broken out by the product usage and disease type or any sort of situation. So you go to eczema in the back, and it's going to give you a ton of different oils and a ton of different products that will help with eczema. I, I have I would have no doubt that that oils uh, can can help with with a skin disease or the skin condition. Right. Uh, that's that that is a totally believable. But thing it's not right going to it's not going to cure the gout. No, it's not going <laughs> to cure the gout. I, I also believe that there are plenty of essential oils that would uh, severely aggravate eczema <laughs> yeah exactly like you don't want to put peppermint oil on your eczema it just it probably wouldn't feel very good so it wouldn't do much here within help. the the great city of salt lake city at the salt palace convention center they had a convention for yes, the, the young living people and at the convention life science publishing that's the company that puts out the book that's not mm -hmm. affiliated with young living though it is but it's not <laughs> yeah was blocked off so that members could peruse the rows of tables which featured an assortment of life science publishing books and products such as Speak Up, Buttercup, How I Brought My Son Back from Autism. <laughs> Fucking gross, dude. <laughs> Speak Up, Buttercup, if your kid's you non-verbal... Non are you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you, are <laughs> what? You, are you fucking kidding me? Written by Royal Crown Diamond, Jody Meshuk. Or Mary Young's biography of her husband, D. Gary Young, the world leader in essential oils. And when the person that wrote this article asked the, the life science publishing employee at the convention where I could find the desk reference, you know, the book, the book for the essential uh -huh. oils that they should not be selling near the essential oils. Yeah, he got directed to a hotel across the street, uh -huh. which is that yeah. what's that Marriott, isn't it? I think uh, it's the one that was right there. Yeah. It's the one by the. Fuck, I used to know that. Is it, is it Hilton? So I don't it's remember. A, it's a Marriott or yeah. Hilton. Or there's, there's a couple. But anyway, yeah, yeah. where, where mm -hmm. the Salt Palace is, it's directly in downtown Salt Lake, next to the next to Temple Square. Yeah. And next to uh, it, Japantown. It, it, yeah, it it's also, a big-ass convention center, man. It'll, yeah, it also, <laughs> also depends on when that took place, because there, yeah. are, there are several of them there now. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> this is probably back when the Crossroads Mall, after it had been torn down. Oh, Jesus, yeah. I love that place. <laughs> uh. Anyway, th to get that book, you had to go across the street to where they were being sold in the lobby mm -hmm. there. The 640-page book is indeed huge, and scanning the pages, it does seem to list oils for almost every disease imaginable, including, fuck me, leukemia. <laughs> you know, blood cancers. You're going to use essential oils to cure your blood cancers, man. Just yeah, just just <laughs> inject the, the <laughs> inject the lavender oil directly into your bone marrow <laughs> to That'll, cure your leukemia. Right into your femur, man. Right, Get that big ass <laughs> jab it right in there. Get that big ass double lot gauge needle and <laughs> jab that right into the marrow. That'll God that'll help. <laughs> that'll cure you the, real quick the, of the, life. The pain means it's working. <laughs> The nice. ghosts are getting real aggravated. <laughs> <laughs> you're pissing off the you're pissing off the cancer ghost. Congestive heart failure, man. Sure. Cerebral palsy. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's a, hey, I, I've that's known a lots of palsy people that, that a, would love to be cured of that. <laughs> that is that is totally a curable thing. Absolutely. Cholera, absolutely. Cholera. Measles, lupus, just to name a few. The book also describes what oils should be used to repair the trauma of parental, sexual, or ritual abuse. I'm sorry, trauma? Yeah. What, I Apply one to three drops of SARA over the area where the abuse took place. Then for <laughs> These are the names of the products. Then forgiveness, <laughs> trauma life, release, joy, present time. 
And for spiritual abuse, apply SARA, forgiveness, oh, no, trauma no. life, release, no, valor, joy. No, no. Huh. That's spousal abuse. Oh, spousal abuse. What did I say? I was at <laughs> spiritual. Spiritual abuse. Spousal abuse. God damn it, man. <laughs> Amorescence, envision, and hope. And feelings of suicide. Yes. No, yes. For what? feelings of what? suicide. What? What? Apply, what? apply two drops of hope on the rim of the ears. Melissa, brain power, surrenda, ruta, vala. Common sense or present time may also be beneficial. These are all the names of their stupid oils that they've got. What the? F <laughs> yes, there's a book that teaches you how to treat suicide, I'm, spousal I'm, abuse, I'm, sexual I'm, abuse, I'm, ritual abuse. Ha, uh, <laughs> mm, gross, man. Mm, so a former employee mm, who did product marketing told the, uh, the article here from a marketing perspective, it was the company's policy not to point members in the direction of the desk reference. <laughs> He said that he never quite understood why Life Science Publishing was given a place at the convention to sell products. After the FDA sent the letter, the compliance team told members they could no longer use that desk reference to promote their businesses or to recruit new members. If they wanted to use it for their own personal use, that was fine, but not while representing Young Living. That's what sparked the frustration, said a former employee of the 2016 meeting. Everyone used this book to get new members to learn about essential oils, and we said you can't use this anymore. They didn't have anything else to give them <laughs> because if you don't have the guide that tells you how to use the magic stuff to cure the real problems that you got, you're just selling them oils. <laughs> the Essential Oils Desk References was written by Young and Mark Schroeder, who was hired as a writer and researcher for Young Living in 97, eventually moving up the ranks to Vice President of Research and Discovery by the time he left in 2015. In 1978, when Schroeder was 17, listen to this motherfucker, Mark Schroeder here. He shot and killed his multi-millionaire grandfather, <laughs> Franklin Bradshaw, with a 357. That's not a that's not a little gun to shoot anybody with, man. That's that's a like I have intent to murder you, gun. <laughs> On orders from his mother, Jesus, I... Because she wanted the money, probably inheritance. Sure, money. sure why, why not? not? I mean, just if it meant that you'd get out of jail because they tried you as a as a youth, and you'd get out, and you had some sort of story where it made it so you could get out of there, you got millions of dollars waiting for you. You know, it's just fast track to money. <laughs> God, I am not saying do this, I'm, people. I'm do just, not do this. It was like. Four years later in 19... Why not just make it look like an accident? Right. He was old. <laughs> he's old. You got stairs. Slipped. He's a multimillionaire. You can guarantee he's got a whole lot of stairs, right? Guarantee he's got some marble laying around somewhere. He could just slip and crack his head on that, you know? Um, there's lots of ways you can make things look like a death. It was 1978. Just apply pretty, some essential oils to the floor. And pretty, it was 1978. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was a lot of coke around. <laughs> And later, four years later in 82, when he was convicted of second degree murder, ultimately facing 12 years in prison, Schroeder said that Young was aware of his past when he hired him and that he chose to overlook it as they set out to grow the business together. <laughs> um, if you look at my history, I did what I did out of loyalty. I was loyal to my mother, said Schroeder, and that loyalty is a mark of my trait throughout my life. I stayed loyal to Gary. I, I, and I would murder for him. No, that's my line. That's not his. <laughs> Over the years, he said they traveled the world, world together, researching various oil blends and blah, 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 blah. Gary had strong opinions on certain oils that would often contradict the science, said Schroeder. And so, him and I, I hate, I hate these people. If they don't know grammar enough to be millionaires, <laughs> I, hate, I hate that. <laughs> I'm going to sit here poor eating my craft dinner <laughs> while well, this guy is a millionaire after shooting his grandfather and working with a fucking con man. And so him and I would argue about it. And oftentimes he would just be, well, my experience overrules the science. And so I would have to defer to him. When he got these strange ideas of what oils could do, he thought that they were inspirations from God and that they were true. Even if there was no science, said another former employee with knowledge of the book's uh, publication. In the first edition that came out in 99, it was copyrighted by a company called Essential Science Publishing, which was established a year earlier, according to the uh, Copyright Office. 
and multiple multiple former employees with knowledge of the matter, Mary Young and her mother LaRue Billiter were also listed as directors, as was Schroeder, according to a 98 corporate filing. And about 10 years later, in 2007, uh, the filing referred to Mary as a director and vice president. According to a former employee with knowledge of essential science publishing, Billiter provided the initial funding for the company and was the sole owner from an equity standpoint. The company did well enough to pay back the money that was loaned, and I thought at that point our ability to remain independent would more or less be secure. But Gary didn't see it that way, said this person, and after three or four years, it just started to deteriorate. The Young Living executive management team wanted the relationship between Young Living and Essential Science Publishing to be much closer than it was legally allowed to be, and they wanted to participate in the profit stream that existed at Essential Science Publishing. For instance, this source told the article, in the early 2000s, those at Young Living removed significant funds, more than $400,000, from Essential Science Publishing's bank account without the company's knowledge. <laughs> Guys, that's that, illegal. That is, <laughs> that is very, very illegal. I, I mean, not that illegal. I mean, it's just a little. It's fine. The source later learned that Young Living was experiencing cash problems and that one of their executives apparently had access to Essential Science Publishing's bank account. Because that's totally a normal thing. They just right? took our money, that's... which is blatantly illegal, said this person. <laughs> <laughs> According to former employees, some at Young Living also expressed worry that Essential Science Publishing wasn't independent enough for the FDA purposes. Brian kind of ran the company to make it look independent, but it was completely controlled by Gary and co and, and owned by Gary, said one person. So partly to satisfy those concerns, a former employee said Young Living started uh, pursuing a relationship with another third party company in which no Young Living personnel played or had any ownership interests. And that company was Life Science Publishing. Those guys at LSP basically came in and bought out all the stock of ESP and the rights so that they could kind of do what ESP was doing from a more legitimate third-party perspective. Right. Sure. Sure. And a few months after right. his departure, sure. ESP stopped existing as a company, said the, the writer of this article. Uh -huh. The copyright for the Essential Oils Desk reference and later revisions were transferred from ESP to Life Science Publishing, according to the Copyright Office. And by 2011, when the fifth edition was published... Life Science Publishing was listed as the sole copyright owner, no longer having D. Gary Young listed anywhere on it or Mark Schroeder. So, of course. But even then, the ties between LSP and Young Living were so close that former employees told Insider they felt uncomfortable about the relationship. I know that there would be conversations between them and people at the company, so I, th I think that could have defeated to an extent the third party thing. I think there was way too much contact between the two. They're still I, allowed to exist I mean, as a corporate entity. These people. This is blatantly yeah. avoiding the yeah. rules set out by the <laughs> FDA <laughs> by pretending I, to be a shell company, the playing the shell games with who owns what and where. Just, it's it's like you could just look at it and be like, "There's a crime," <laughs> and they'd be like, "Well, I don't see anything," <laughs> or you. Put a blindfold of a couple of million dollars over somebody that's looking at this <laughs> anyway oh my god they used the excuse of making it more independent with lsp when in fact the real reason that the change was made was to align themselves more closely with the publishing company which is a problem because the publishing company can only make health claims when they are completely independent from the supplier of the product that's why the book was only available <laughs> in the hotel across the street See? Totally legal. Didn't sell it there at all. We had all these other books that were horrible, but this one in particular that sells our products in general, yeah, that has to be sold somewhere else. Right. Bonnie Patton, the executive director of Truth in Advertising, which is a nonprofit um, that is aimed at protecting consumers from deceptive marketing, told Insider that it is fairly common for LM MLM companies to form relationships with third parties to distribute medical claims about their products. Of course it is. There is online evidence of a relationship between these two companies, which its previous website featured a picture of young and current young living president, Jared Turner. In a January 2019 Facebook post on Turner's account, young living members were encouraged to use LSP resources to edu educate themselves about these oils. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. 
It's a marketing ploy that's being used to try and say that they're not marketing the product using disease treatment claims, but rather just providing them with someone's opinion based on a book, Patton said. If there's a material connection linking the author of the book with the company, then I think there could be issues for the company and or the distributors. And in her biography of Gary Young, Mary confirms that he wrote the book. I... What more of a connection so, do you need? <laughs> very, very good. Very good at, at, at the crimes. Um, God, it's ridiculous. So LSP's desk, desk reference is a resource to be used for educational purposes and not in connection with the sale of any essential oils, said the um, battles in the statement to insiders said that historically the essential oils desk reference has been used by independent distributors to provide education on these blah, 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 blah. Um, LSP understands the rules regarding health claims and prioritizes the health and safety of its readers. It appropriately acknowledges the benefits of essential oils within established regulatory guidelines. As stated in the desk reference, readers are urged to rely primarily, if not entirely, on their health care providers for medical treatment. In a small line in the very far back end of the book, written in gray on top of white paper. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know that bit, but I wouldn't I be mean, surprised. That, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all. <laughs> It's it's written in that ne it's like the the Santa Claus you know mm -hmm. then when he reads that little card he becomes Santa and it's because everything included in the fucking contract was on the dot above the eye. <laughs> well, it's there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in its statement, Young Living <laughs> says this: In recent years, Young Living has doubled down on its compliance program to educate and police its members to ensure that accurate and proven claims about its products are being made. The company promotes only FDA compliant marketing material and all members are instructed to only use materials approved by Young Living. It has diso disassociated itself from the desk reference offered by Life Science Publishing. They haven't. Through its membership agreement, each Young, member, young Living member promises to sell products in compliance with all laws and regulations. No member is permitted to make inaccurate claims about the products, though they do. The agreement further provides that a member in violation of these requirements may have their membership terminated if we catch them. Today, Young's Living Compliance team is strong and empowered and robustly enforces policies and procedures, and the company has terminated members for failing to remain within compliance. <laughs> sure. <sighs> Sure. So, within within the story, <laughs> we have a couple of people here. Sarah, not her real name, who lives in Texas, said that her partner's mother was diagnosed with cancer. Her doctor recommended she take an antidepressant as she had a history of mental illness. But instead of driving to pick her up, for the prescription is offered. Her partner's sister, a young living member, tried to convince their mother that she should use an oil blend called Joy, which would promote mental health. We have Josh, who asked only for his first name to be included in the story from Michigan, told of a co-worker who recommended using oils to lower his wife's blood pressure after she was hospitalized for pregnancy-related complications. You know, pregnancy-related high blood pressure, which can kill the mother. Yeah, that one's dangerous. Like, really. Cassie, a former Young Living member who was involved with the company for about a year until the beginning of 2018 and also requested they not use their real name, told the article that while members are discouraged from posting publicly about their product claims because the FDA warning, health claims were extremely prevalent in private Facebook groups or at parties in people's homes. Mm -hmm. She said that members often encourage each other to use the essential oils desk reference to research oils. Of course. In addition course. to an app, Ref Guide for Essential Oils, that she said provides similar information. Of course it's a fucking app. Of course it of course is. It is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cassie said, it's not a concern that the oils are actually causing harm by promoting medical usage. It's that the FDA will come down on Young Living and close mm -hmm. them down. So it's all secretive. Right. They, the members, really promote distrust of drug companies and healthcare providers. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there who are frustrated with the medical community, which is scary, specifically if you have something like cancer or serious chronic health problems. I've seen people on there, meaning social media whose family members might have a life-threatening chronic illness, and they're asking what oils I can tell them to use. <laughs> Jesus. Just... So, in the, the, <sighs> the article here reached out to a random, uh, provided a random sample of essential oil uh, studies found on PubMed to two experts. Mm -hmm. Daniel Brooks, who's medical director for the Banner Poison and Drug Information Center in Arizona, and Joe Schwartz, a chemistry professor and director of the Office for Science and Society at McGill University. 
He emphasized that while the oils can be beneficial in helping people relax and live a healthier lifestyle, by the end of the day, they're not medicine and they shouldn't be treated as such. Of course. Schwartz said, it can distract people from therapies that could actually work. I don't blame desperate people with a medical condition for which conventional medicine hasn't offered any help. I think you could blame the ones who are preying on that desperation with these false statements. There's just no evidence that essential oils can do anything for serious diseases like cancer. Mm -hmm. Oh, but a, a young living spokesperson came oh, back and said, to the extent the article targets the company's now deceased uh, founder, Gary Young. Well, I think we already read this part there, so. Oh, I'm sure. I'm, yeah. yeah, we probably probably did. So there's one popular drink that they sell called Ningsha Red, which consists of various essential oils mixed with super fruits. Oh, good. Like yeah. wolfberry and <laughs> the blueberry. Uh -huh. Among its health benefits, according to Young Living, it is support for energy levels, normal cellular function, and whole body and normal eye health. Like mush mouth that doesn't provide anything there. You well, know? I mean, I mean, you know what does all those things? Water. <laughs> but according to a former employee who was involved in marketing this Ningsha Red, the drink was in fact mostly fruit juice. <laughs> yeah. That person described the marketing of the product as a challenge because there weren't a lot of strong product claims other than they contain wonderful fruits and that these wonderful fruits have amazing properties. And he acknowledged that the juice doesn't necessarily have the same properties as the fruit that it comes from. I had to write copy for an oil called Sarah. It's one of the ones we mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to bring out suppressed emotions. How the fuck is an oil going to bring out? Su um, I shouldn't get mad. Shouldn't get mad. And reduce negative emotions. One former employee recalled, I would be laughing half the time when I'd be writing that copy. I just thought of a lot of it was very mystical and unproven, but we had a nice story. <laughs> <laughs> I Sure, it is. I, it's very. So when all it's this. It's a very uh, fantastical thing. When all um, this was going down, uh, according to the American Association of Poison Control Centers between 2014 and 18, there was a 91 percent <laughs> increase in cases of documented by poison control centers across the country who were exposed to essential oils. <laughs> Yeah, for instance, it's, it, they're highly concentrated chemical compounds <laughs> that may not necessarily be good to yeah, one, put on your body or what, ingest. One that I read or I, I saw somebody talk about one time was that there was this wintergreen oil. Yeah. And it, it's a good oil to have. Sure. However, her kid drank a lot of it. Oh, God, no. A, a lot of it. You know, because yeah. she took the childproof cap off because she wanted to have it easier access because her knuckles hurt. Anyway, the kid drinks a lot of this wintergreen oil and the kid becomes like uh, immobile and passes out and retching all over the place. And in wintergreen oil, there's a chemical in there that is essentially acetic acid or no, yeah. not acetic acid, whichever one is uh, yeah. essentially what you get from um, aspirin. Um, I can't remember what it is. Doesn't matter. But the kid was yeah. essentially having an aspirin overdose. Yeah, what, what is which that? could what is fucking that? kill you? Ascorbic acid? A, a, I can't remember which might one. Be it is. A, it might be ascorbic acid. I, I I can't remember. It's a Ray syndrome, I think. Yeah, and one, so this kid thing. nearly died from yeah? this because one, it's hard to figure out where all this is coming from. Yeah, because the kid can't talk to you about it. Anyway, poisoning happens a lot with these things. Mm -hmm. So here's a couple more examples. Young Living settled a lawsuit with a woman who claimed that she experienced severe burns after rubbing bergamot, which is a cit citrusy essential oil on her yeah. skin, and spending two hours in the sun, sustaining huh? a permanent injury to the skin of her throat and wrists. Huh? Huh? It's almost like chemical compounds react differently when exposed to sunlight. You know, all well, that energy they, that's coming they do, in. They and... Um... <laughs> um Ber bergamot <laughs> uh, you know what gives earl gray tea uh that that very distinct pleasurable and yeah. flavor yeah that's bergamot yeah concentrate, concentrate that <laughs> concentrate that down to an oil and then put it on your skin for one which is don't do that like I, if you've ever smelled concentrated bergamot what it doesn't smell like the tea. Like you, you no, no. You can you can see how you'd get there, but it's like <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's it's not. Um, it, it's not a pleasant smell that concentrated. Uh, and, and yeah, yeah, it's it's an irritant. So here's some of those uh 
other incidents that happened. High blood pressure, severe rashes, swelling of the throat, and a case in the 11 that came out that they paid out on all these lawsuits of, which a, which a woman claimed that her esophagus exploded after using Lung, Young Living's alkaline lime drink. Um, she ultimately spent time in the ICU and needed surgery. That's, that's, that's a, that's horrific sounding. Okay. Like, uh, let's see. This person says, how do how does your, how does, how? Well, alka lime. Well, so yeah, but I'm wondering alkali water burning the shit out of her throat, you know, because uh, it, it got yeah. mixed wrong. I don't know. I don't have, well, the yeah, detail I have on no that idea. One, maybe they, maybe, they, <laughs> maybe it's one of those cases where it's a mix your own and they, they just they like drank the concentrate. <laughs> I don't know. So here, here, I'm just going to read a couple more of these and we're going to wrap this up because we could honestly go oh, on for another go, one, but go, I'm not. We could go, we could go on for hours. <laughs> uh, let's oh, see. Jesus, this is horrific. Uh, there was a customer whose throat swelled that shut after using Young Living's BLM capsules, not the BLM we're thinking of here. Uh, the product that didn't clearly indicate that it had an ingredient that was incorporated from shellfish. Um, the woman who was allergic to shellfish said, yeah. My hope is that the company begins to note that the, in the product guide and online that it contains shellfish because it currently doesn't. If I would ever would have ordered it, I would also hope that they move the allergen location where it currently is on the bottle so it's more visible. <laughs> God damn. He nearly murdered somebody. <laughs> shellfish Jeez. allergies are no fucking joke, man. <laughs> food allergies in, yeah. food allergies in, in, in general, general yeah. are, are not something to joke around with, which is why... Which is why labels about things that you ingest uh, <laughs> when there's an allergen present, why they all have labels on them. This lady, which uh, this happened in 2014, uh, experienced seizures, brain swelling, and a drug in was put into a drug-induced coma after interacting with oils, including the Valor Essential Oil Blend. The report investigating that incident said that the woman's upline the young living member who sold her the oils was a reflex, ref, reflexologist ugh, who instructed her to stop taking her seizure medications prescribed by a doctor. Jesus fucking Christ. So after about two right. months of essential oil therapy and no medication, she ended up in the hospital mm -hmm. in the in the ICU in an induced coma, said a member of their advisory council wrote in the report right. detailing the incident. Her health consultant had advised her to stop this medication and other medications she was taking for pain of other injuries she had. So she discontinued all of her medications and relied only on oils administered to her, to her by her health consultant. God damn. Okay. Okay. So Jesus Christ. Uh, one got a hives and itchiness from peppermint oil on, on her body. She reported mm -hmm. wheezing with a possible restriction and swelling of her airway. Allergic reaction with the Benadryl, Pepsid, and Salimdrol, and epi breathing treatments, which is a nebulizer. So there was another woman that experienced vomiting, hives, and the swelling of the throat, taking ICP, which helps keep your colon clean. <laughs> Determined not to be caused by the pro product itself, but by the, because the product was expired. A man whose chest pain was so excruciating right. after drinking Ningxia Red that he had trouble breathing and ended up in the emergency room. Determined not to be due to the product, although the cause of the incident remains unclear. They probably paid him out for that one. The hospital staff was concerned that he had consumed something that didn't agree with him. He believes this may be that drink. And a woman who'd said peppermint caused hives on her body, wheezing in a swollen airway. Determined not to be caused by the product, but from an individual's sensitivity to a component naturally occurring in the peppermint oil. Not to be ca caused by the product, uh -huh. but definitely something that was in the peppermint oil. <laughs> <laughs> that was the product. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, there's all sorts of they they tried to sell these uh young living essential oils as treatment for Ebola and other viruses, so they, they got did. slapped on the they wrist did. for coronavirus. They did. They did. I remember that. Yeah. Um uh, NAD re recommends that young living essential oils discontinue claims about like um claims on the advertisers essential oil saying will calm and relax consumers when applied or diffused, will help relieve consumers feelings of anxiety. Um, so the advertiser agreed permanently to discontinue several claims that the essential oils and other ingredients that can promote feelings of calm and relaxation, help consumers sleep, provide clarity and focus and alertness, energize, energize is a loaded ass word, Oh, super <laughs> loaded. uh, improve consumers mood and increase their motivation. And there's uh, that didn't even get into the story of the 
D. Gary Young creating his own um what do you call them? Distillery units where he, he welded them together and he didn't put pressure valves in these things for them yeah. to be able to let pressure out. So he faced a $10,000, 280 for safety violations that were mm -hmm. at his plant that he had out in Mona, Utah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I grabbed all of the stuff that happened in there, like deformed, cracked and corroded bolts, rivets, uh, sheaves and drums. Oh yeah. Yeah. Pins, bearing shafts, gears, rollers, locking and clamping devices, brake part, uh, brake systems. Like he just, he's the, your typical guy that's like, I can do it. I can fix it myself. I can make it myself. I saw a guy in France do it once. And he does it, and he nearly kills some people from it because mm -hmm. it exploded. So, oh, man. Like, there was also, they had to pay almost a, a million dollars for importing rosewood because it's a uh, yeah, it's an endangered wood. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There's, there's just a uh... lot to this whole thing. And there was, like, one other article about uh, gets a uh, deception suit tossed for now. The, the, the judge managed to pass that one. But it's just like they face litigation around every corner. They're trying to cut corners when it comes to the FDA, all the laws that they don't follow. And it's almost like we have a broken fucking healthcare system in this country where people are at such dire straits that they're willing to look towards snake oil salesmen to sell them literally oil squeezed from snakes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's um... to cure their problems because we can't afford health in this country we don't make it a priority we yeah. and those that can't afford it tend not to use it because it gets prohibitively expensive to fix the problems that are making us up oh yeah it, it absolutely is absolutely is it, it's ridiculous <sighs> and add on to that it, <laughs> there are obviously problems in uh the the, the fda the there's FDA problems and, there's problems and, in I mean, although this isn't really on the FDA, this is this is a a, a problem of uh, legislation and legality, and why the hell are uh, why are we allowing supplements? Yeah, uh, anything, supplements to be any anything. If you put it in your body, it should have it to <laughs> should either qualify as a food or a drug. It's a food or it's a drug. Hey, thanks, Warren Hatch. I really appreciate that one. Yeah. <laughs> He didn't get rich off that at all. No, no, not at all. No, no, no. Right. So anyway, that's all I got for this one. Yeah, fuck these <laughs> Isn't guys. Isn't that enough? <laughs> fuck these guys. Yeah. So terrible company. Don't buy anything from them. Try to convince people that are trying to sell you this shit that it's a bad idea to support a company that is this blatantly evil. Oh, you know? yeah. If you have a choice between just... generic Kroger brand peppermint oil versus Young Living oil, Get the fucking Kroger brand. <laughs> oh, yeah, at least at least that is guaranteed food grade. <laughs> right. Instead of, you know, may contain shellfish. <laughs> right. <laughs> or, you know, will make you catch fire when you go out in the uh, sun. <laughs> uh, don't don't put oils on your skin and then go out into the sun. That's just a bad idea. <laughs> like all around bad. Well, I mean, it would be like me lathering up with like olive oil and going and sunbathe like. Yeah, you, you just, do you like? I, I got you, some pork rinds over here. That's exactly what it'd be. Like. 